So I wanted to explain to you how our circuit for our monster works. So as you'll note, when we cover up the photoresistor, the lights turn on, and when we remove that, the lights turn back off, so he glows in the dark. This is, as you may recall, the opposite of what we expect a photoresistor to do. In this case, when I cover up the photoresistor, my light dims. Okay, and when I relieve it, it goes because it creates more resistance in the dark than it does in the light. The way we do that is we build a voltage divider, and we're going to walk through the process of that today. But first, we need to understand a little bit more about how circuits work. So I'm going to take out my photoresistor, and I'm going to put in one of my pins. And right now we have a very simple circuit. We go from the positive bus down to the LED, through the LED, back up the negative, and down the negative bus back to the battery. Okay? So very simple, not much to it. And we're going to start with this, and we're going to talk about how short circuits work and how we can take advantage of those in order to make our photoresistor act the opposite of the way that it normally does. If you would like to play along, and I recommend that you do, then you will need some jumpers. I use these little, um, these small individually spaced jumpers there so that it's not distracting, but everywhere I use those, you'll use your jumpers here. You'll want your photoresistor. You'll want a 2.2 kiloohm resistor. That's one with all three red bands. Mine is cut down because I already had some that were cut down, and again, they make it just a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing on the camera. Yours, of course, does not need to be cut down. So first, we're going to create a short circuit. And what that means is that we give the electricity an easier way to go that bypasses the need to go through the LED. So at its very basic, we could simply connect the positive and negative buses up at the top there. And as you'll see, the light goes out because instead the electricity is going through the positive up across the wire and then back down to the negative. And this offers no resistance, whereas the LED offers a little bit of resistance. So the, the electricity is going to be a lot happier flowing along this wire back through instead of going through the LED. And it just skips the LED entirely. Put my battery back together, there we go. A short circuit will still drain your battery. And so you don't want to leave your short circuit in there very long. I'm doing it for demonstration purposes, but a short circuit is just kind of like dumping water out. So I'm going to create a short circuit again. This time I'm going to do it a little bit differently and I'm going to unplug my battery while I'm doing it so I don't continue to drain it. Okay, I'm creating another positive connection down here and I'm going to actually stretch that positive connection over and across to the same bus that the LED is on. And I'm doing this to make my life a little bit easier as we add complexity to our circuit here. You do not need to follow along for this part. Um, I'll, I'll add you back in when we start adding resistors to our circuit. So I'm going to hook my battery back up, and I've hooked it up, and the LED is doing nothing. I'm going to unhook it to explain why. It's going through this positive bus, and it's going all the way down to this other positive going through this connector here, up and it's going back up to the negative bus and back to the negative. So we've created a short circuit because again, it would much rather, the circuit would much rather, or the electricity would much rather go through this uh, connector here that has no resistance than go through the LED. 
It doesn't matter that it's longer. It just matters that this doesn't have resistance or it has very little resistance and the LED has more than it wants to bother with. So what we want to do is we want to replace this circuit here with something or this connector here with something that has resistance so that we can encourage some of the electricity to go through the LED while some of it's still just making a useless circuit over here. So I'm going to replace that green connector with my photoresistor. I'm going to connect my circuit back up. Now you'll see that my electricity finds it easier to go through my LED than it does to go through my photoresistor. And if you'll recall, my photoresistor actually creates more resistance when it's covered up. So we're not going to succeed in changing the light at all by covering up the photoresistor because it has too much resistance. And that's where our final resistor comes in. I'm going to move my LED back so I have room for my resistor. And I'm going to replace this negative connector here with my resistor. So now what we've done is we've created something that when the photoresistor is not seeing light and is therefore a lower resistance, the electricity throws, flows through the photoresistor and back to the start, skipping the LED completely. But when we increase the resistance on the photoresistor by covering it with something black, there is enough resistance that some of the electricity, not all of it, but some of the electricity chooses to go through the LED instead of going through the photoresistor. And that is what a voltage divider is. We split the voltage of the electricity so that some of it is going through, through the photoresistor and doing nothing, and some of it is going through the LED. And so if we remove this, We've made it so that no longer does any of that electricity want to go through that LED because it's easier to take the photoresistor out because we have lowered the resistance on the photoresistor. The important part here, and you need to play on your own with other things, is that I experimented to choose the right resistance level for this final resistor that we put in this 2.2 kilo ohm so that I did have the correct amount of resistance that encouraged the electricity to go through the LED and not just through the photoresistor as well as encouraging the electricity to go through the photoresistor and not just the LED. So it was very important that we split the electricity and that required that we balance our two resistors. So if you have a different photoresistor that provides a different amount of resistance or a different LED that takes a different amount of voltage to light up, then your mileage will vary and it'll be different. So I encourage you to play with this, find out which LEDs work together. Don't short circuit too much because you will drain your battery very fast. We are creating a short circuit right here, but because we have so much resistance involved in our short, short circuit, we are preventing our battery from draining incredibly fast. I believe that um, this battery with this setup should last about a month instead of just draining completely, but even when the LEDs are off, the battery will continue to drain because it is going through the voltage um, divider, the, the photoresistor, and straight back. So you are draining your battery, you're just draining it very slowly. Uh, whereas if it's unplugged, you should not be draining it at all.